let me say a few words by way of introduction about the title um, chosen for the lectures. In particular, you know, why the subtitle? What does it mean to say it's a causal realist approach? Well, really, it refers to a broad movement in economics that began when Karl Menger wrote his great Principles of Economics in 1871. And it flourished and, and really dominated economics uh, through World War I and uh, began to diminish in the 1920s. Um, included not just Austrian economists, okay, so we, we wanted a broader ap approach. Um, it included others that, that followed Menger in, 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 in America, Sweden, uh, Italy, um, the Netherlands, and France. And some of the famous names were, were, were Clark, Fetter, and Davenport in the United States, Wicksteed in Great Britain, uh, Augusto Graziani in uh, Italy, uh, Liwa Beaulieu in France, and many, many others. Now, Menger um, emphasized that economics was a unified science involving the search for cause and effect relationships or causal laws that would explain the prices, wages, and interest rates that are actually observed. Menger was actually a journalist before he became an economist, um, an economic journalist. And uh, he observed the markets very closely, and he noted that, in fact, prices changed for, um, as a result of factors that were not really included in the classical um, theory of, of prices. Let me just give you a quote that sort of sums up this approach, I think, very well. And it puts price theory at the center of economics where it properly belongs. And this quote comes from the preface to Menger's book, Principles of Economics. And it says, I have devoted special attention to the investigation of the causal connections between economic phenomena involving products and the correspondent agents of production, which we would call factors of production or resources, not only for the purpose of establishing a price theory based upon reality and placing all price phenomena, including interest, wages, ground rent, together under one unified point of view, but also because of the insights we thereby gain into many other economic processes heretofore completely misunderstood. So notice what I've highlighted there or bolded, causal connections based upon reality and from one unified point of view. That sums up the causal realist approach. Now, what happened to this approach? I don't, this is not a history of thought um, seminar, but I do want to say just a few words about what happened to the approach. Um, because we're, that's certainly not the approach that's reflected in um, current day textbooks. Um, as I said, the, the, the uh, causal realistic um, approach to, to economics became really an international enterprise, okay? And, um, and, and most economists were involved in it. Unfortunately, it veered off the track. The economics profession veered off the track in the interwar period, in the 1920s and especially in the 1930s. And there were three factors that led to this. First of all, um, Alfred Marshall in, in the United Kingdom or in Great Britain um, introduced through a very famous and, and much used textbook written in 1890, he introduced partial equilibrium analysis that focused on business firms in particular markets okay, while abstracting from or ignoring the unity of all economic phenomena. He also tended to downplay the role of the consumer and of consumer demand. And his work was extremely influential and pretty much swept Great Britain between uh, 1890 and 1910, or World War I, and then in the United States became the dominant theoretical approach by the 1920s. Okay. Uh, a second factor that led to the decline of this causal realist approach was a shift from explaining actual prices, or prices that we actually observe, prices that, for example, Matt actually paid for that Dr. Pepper today unless he took it free from the Institute, um, <laughs> actually observed price. Yeah, there is a free lunch here. Um, actually observed prices. Okay, now it shifted focus from that to explaining those things, okay, which Menger ha had insisted on, to explaining equilibrium prices um, that we find in the model of perfect competition. Now that, was, that model was formalized, introduced into economics by the American economist Frank Knight in the 1920s. Um, by the 1930s, the uh, economics profession had not, not only veered off track, but had actually jumped the tracks. 
Uh, by then, we had the monopolistic competition revolution. What that did was to um, portray almost every single real world firm, except that maybe a tiny farmer in Iowa, as charging monopolistic prices. Then we had the Keynesian Revolution shortly thereafter, a few years later, and that severed the connection between laws governing the microsphere of consumers, firms, uh, and markets, and it propounded sort of a new and contradictory principle, or set of principles, to explain macro phenomena like uh, unemployment, depression, inflation, as if these things were not um, in, uh, intimately tied to the price system. Okay. And finally, we had the rise of, of mathematical economics in the 1930s. Uh, that had pre previously been, well, I want to use the word cult, but a small sect in, in, on continental Europe, um, for, uh, especially in the French-speaking Switzerland and, and France. Okay. And suddenly, when it made its way to uh, Great Britain and then to the US, um, it exploded in popularity. All right, so by the 1950s, economics was definitely on the wrong track. Okay. And there's a, a wonderful quote by um, someone named Townsend introducing a, a, a book of readings on, on modern price theory in 1970 or 71. And what he does is he goes through the people that were part of the causal realist movement and, and, and sort of says that these people have been forgotten or their price theory is no longer relevant. So he says the shades, meaning the ghosts or specters, of Jevons, Menger, Edgeworth, Wicksteed, Vixell, Clark and Fisher, almost all of whom were involved uh, in, in, in following that approach, the cause of realist approach, um, may justifiably be offended by the attribution of modern price theory to two sources, Alfred Marshall and Leon Walras. But these two scholars have had far and away the most influence on 20th century thought, and that is absolutely true. In contrast with Marshall's down-to-earth struggle with the interpretation of the detailed working of the economy, stands Walras's grand construction of general equilibrium. In a typical British or American textbook on price theory, nine-tenths of the content stem from Marshall's work, general equilibrium only getting a notice in the last chapter appendix. That's still pretty much true for undergraduate textbooks. Okay. Now, the course that we will be giving is what, what you would have gotten in college okay, or in contemporary universities, had this tragic diversion of economics not occurred. Okay. 